an ultrasonic vinyl record cleaner. I'll show you how to make it. And uh, I'm going to do the conclusions here at the start. And then if you're interested, you can see how to make one yourself. Um, now, cleaning uh, records, uh, normally uh, you would do it with some sort of solution and rubbing. and um, Or you can spend a lot of money on uh, vacuum machines and all sorts. But I think ultrasonic is uh, the best way of trying to get the dirt out of a record. Now, uh, you cannot uh, repair a record that is scratched or got defects or a mic these so-called micro-fractures which appear to happen on uh, some older records. It won't straighten out warp records or any other problem. But if there's dirt on the record, it will uh, do a much better job at removing it than trying to use any other methods of uh, solutions and rubbing and scrubbing and all sorts of things. Anyway, what I found after various experiments is that uh, it's best to uh, clean just one record or a maximum of two. I've got a single and an LP in there at the moment. Uh, you can do up to three, maybe even four, but it's less effective. The um, scrubbing action of the, uh, of the water as it's vibrated is best if it can get to the record and vibrate against the surface. If you've got a number of records in there, it seems to limit the uh, action between them. The other thing I found is that you can't use water just on its own. It's not as effective as using some specialized um, additive, not a lot, such as a specialized um, vinyl cleaner or a wetting agent that enables the uh, record uh, the water to get on the record and not rub on, run off if there's little greasy areas. The other thing I found is that um, put it in as long as possible uh, and also heat the water. Heating the water, I heat it to 40 degrees centigrade, uh, does increase the, um, the effectiveness of the cleaning and also the longer it's in there the better. Uh, remember the record is only in only about a third of the records in at one time so it's going to if it's rotating so it's only going to spend a third of the time actually being clean so if you put it on for 15 minutes it's only going to be clean any one part for five minutes now as long as possible I recommend even half an hour because uh, you can turn it on and go away you don't have to sit there and watch it it's quite safe uh, so the longer the better now as far as removing a dirt goes I found that um, you clean the record first using some sort of solution to remove any main surface dirt and if possible that soaks in and helps get in the grooves and then it's, if you've got it as clean as possible putting it in means that the dirt in the bottom of the grooves it will get to work on them. Um, it doesn't remove all the dirt in one go no matter how you try if a record is particularly dirty it still remains a little bit in maybe keep on cleaning it several times uh, it does improve it bit by bit but it does get rid of dirt if you've got a, an old record say 20 30 40 years old um, that's been well looked after no scratches but it does seem to accumulate some dirt it will get rid of most of that and uh, the effect is quite nice on some old records that are particularly um, noisy it does reduce the noise um, now, uh, it, does it change the sound? I've got, I haven't really noticed any change in sound. I haven't sat down and, with my ear against the speaker to see if it increases the treble or decreases it. I don't know. But it is possible that um, if your records have got tiny micro fractures, uh, that it might make them worse. But anyway, uh, you can clean um, singles as well. Uh, now the water level, you want it up to the label. I'm not worried about water on the label. I found that it doesn't have any effect on labels. It doesn't cause them to stain or come off or anything. And uh, rotational speed. Um, you'll find the way I, I made this so it rotates the record. Um, the slower the better really. I mean if it whizzes in and out, I don't think the scrubbing action gets time to get into the grooves before it's back out of the water again. 
so I recommend less than one RPM a minute and um, as long as possible. Now drying, drying's a bit of a problem. You can put, I put the singles in a rack and just let them dry off on their own. And in the video you'll see I've also got a way, way of uh, clamping them on here and drying them with a very powerful air blaster, which I found gives no problem at all. In fact, I like it a lot. It blasts the water out of the grooves, right into the grooves, and hopefully blasts anything left with the water out the grooves as well. Uh, I can't see any problem with blowing uh, air, uh, dust in the air onto the record. I don't think that's going to harm it whatsoever, but that's up to you if you want to leave it on a rack to dry. Other methods you'll find online with using little 12 volt fans and all sorts of things. Anyway, hopefully uh, you'll find the video on how I made this interesting. Um, and the conclusions are if you've got a record that's not scratched in any way or defective, it will reduce the dirt. It, it doesn't, if it's badly uh, noisy from uh, years and years of accumulated dirt, it doesn't seem to get rid of it completely, but um, the longer you leave it in the bath, the better, or if you, you put it in once and then put it in again, until it's all gone. So it is effective in cleaning records. And in summary, you should um, pre-clean the record if they're pretty dirty to start with before putting it in. Use the um, a special uh, cleaner. Uh, I only use a capsule of special uh, one in there mixed. Heat the water, put it in as long as possible, slow rotation, and um, that's it really. If you want to see how I did it uh, and other conclusions, uh, you can watch the whole video. Um, it's come out pretty good. It was very cheap to make this. Just a lot of a bit of elbow uh, work, uh, sawing, drilling, and uh, the motor was cheap as you see in the video, how it's driven, the whole thing. Uh, these things are only really cheap. Um, well, that's about it. I hope you find the rest of it interesting if you watch it. Before putting the record in the ultrasonic cleaning bath, I find it's best to pre-wash them. Uh, you can use um, any uh, liquid for rec cleaning record players, uh, such as this, into the groove or make up your own. And then I use this brush, Colgate brush. It's um, 0 0.01 millimeter slim tip bristles. And it's very soft as well, so it's not going to dig into your records. And I put some of this uh, liquid onto uh, this little pad, which is um, uh, for <laughs> painting rooms and things. This uh, soft pad, it doesn't, the bristles don't come off, they're soft, and it, you can put a little bit on there. Normally I'd use a smaller bottle. Uh, wet the record completely round. And then I've got this table which rotates, but if you if you haven't got a table, just do it manually. But using the bristles gets into the grooves and will loosen any dirt that's already there and give the ultrasonic cleaner. A, a good start to get the dirt out. Some of these um, vinyl cleaning liquids dry quite quick, quickly, so you have to be um, careful that it doesn't dry before you finish brushing it. And I can turn it over. and do the other side and then put it into the ultrasonic cleaner after pre-cleaning the records with the little toothbrush you can put them straight in to the ultrasonic you don't dry them off or anything normally I'd only put one for maximum cleaning or two uh, but I put three in at the moment this time uh, set the temperature to uh, 40 degrees centigrade 
and the timer at least 30 minutes even longer if you want because uh, you can go away you don't have to stay with it and come back because remember only about a third of the records in the tank at any one time so at 30 minutes any one part of the records only going to spend about 10 minutes in the bath so we leave them running and the slow rotation doesn't have to be quick uh, one rep per minute or less is fine Now I blow dry uh, the records. I find that um, it doesn't uh, do any harm. It doesn't really blast dirt from the atmosphere on it or uh, cause any other problems and it's very quick. Uh, I've got this uh, high power uh, blower which is used for cleaning motorbikes normally. And um, I've got this old homemade uh, vacuum cleaner which didn't work very well. But it's a way of holding the record. If you're going to blow dry, you've got to um, use an old record player or way of <laughs> keeping the record from blowing around because this is very powerful. It doesn't have to go around. Uh, you can just blow it off um, as it's stationary, and then. Uh, but mine can actually go around as well. Anyway, uh, I'll just show you how it blows all the water off. Turn this on. It's a bit noisy. Also rotate mine as well, so that way or the other way. Anyway, I'll do that, and I can uh, I can turn it over and do the other side, and just uh, blast off any remaining water. Okay, this is a record that hasn't been cleaned. Uh, you can hear the crackling any second. So there's a lot of crackling on this record. Uh, gonna put it through the cleaning cycle, uh, pre-cleaning it with uh, some vinyl uh, cleaner and the uh, small brush and put it in a heated ultrasonic for 30 minutes at 40 degrees C and then we recheck it. Okay after cleaning and um, the ultrasonic bath background noise is almost totally gone almost totally gone the background noise just a couple of tiny little ticks which if you put it through the bath again probably go so um, cleaning as I've shown uh, works very very well and um, the best result I've had from all sorts of methods of cleaning using this uh, microscope to look at the grooves of a record and display it on the screen you can see all the dirt in between the grooves all these little dots so um, I'm going to clean this record as you can see it's uh, we're looking at the just off the top corner and uh, if I move the camera slightly those are the running grooves there after cleaning the record uh, looking at the grooves again there's none of the uh, white specks which is the particles of dirt they're all gone now and um, 
on the run-in grooves. There's no dirt there. So that's about the same place you were looking at before. So all the little white specks have gone. Here's a Joni Mitchell record which I've tried cleaning but it crackles a lot. It doesn't have any uh, visible uh, scratches and it just seems to be the random crackling in the background. So let's see if the ultrasonic can clean it or not. Um, as I said, I've tried cleaning it in normal ways with uh, various record cleanings, but it made no difference. So I'll just pay a bit of the crackling. The crackling is very noticeable all the time and very off-putting. So I'm going to put it in the tank and um, see if it makes any difference. So here's the record after ultrasonic cleaning. I've just uh, blown it dry. Uh, we're going to see if there's any change in the crackling. So let's just lower this on. Well, I would say the crackling was uh, reduced. It hasn't gone away, but it's definitely reduced. So I don't know whether further cleaning will uh, make it even better. I think I might give it another go in the cleaning bath and see if it makes any difference. Because that's definitely, um, though it's still crackling, it's definitely uh, reduced it. This Joni Mitchell original album from about 1969. It was very, very noisy when I first got it. After couldn't clean it with all sorts of cleaners. But then after putting it in the ultrasonic tank once and then twice, it's virtually noise free now. And it's um, uh, you can listen to it and without all the crackling in the background. I'll just play you a piece. So ultrasonic cleaning is very, very successful. Um, the way I show how to do it uh, really, really works. And um, in the other uh, video, uh, I'll show you how I made the ultrasonic cleaner very cheaply uh, and um, how, uh, how basically just to use it and get um, excellent results.